Recording in progress. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to Industrial Amputation. Yeah. Today we'll be sitting down with a person who needs no introduction, but goddamn does he deserve one. <laughs> a master craftsman, writer, teacher, mentor, producer, label creator, musician, <laughs> coffee aficionado, loyal friend, husband, and father, award-winning museum founder and curator of all things awesome, and he's a dyed-in-the-wool lifesaver to boot. The very definition of the term Renaissance man, he's also played in and founded a couple of small projects over the years that most of us have heard of. He is directly responsible for this show being a thing as he was instrumental in saving the life of our co-host, Mr. Charles Levi. Yeah. Ten year old Joe is truly peeing his pants right now. People, we've all marched to his beat. I present to you Levi's own personal drummer. From Brian Brain, original member of Public Image Limited, he's worked with Ministry, Nine Inch Nails, is the founder of Pig Face, Damage Manual, RX, drummer for Killing Joke on my favorite album, Extremities, just to name a few, Mr. Martin Atkins. Thank you, sir, for joining us and giving us your time. Back, back, Thanks. Back, back, back. And that's, that's all we got time for. That's, <laughs> it, that's it. And, uh, and now we'll have to go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Thank you. No hey, problem. I've got, very, I've got a very special request here from someone behind the scenes. Our uh, our co our uh, co host Levi's lovely fiance Danny has a letter she's asked us to read for you, Martin. Okay, Martin, yeah. I have wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being there for Levi in his darkest hours. I have learned over time how you were with Levi, Levi daily at the hospital. Thank you for keeping the medical staff well caffeinated with dark matter coffee and bringing them tokens of appreciation. Every day you spent with Levi in CCU, playing him music, holding his hand, talking to him and playing messages for him from the Levi love line that you had set up for his fans to call, kept him fighting. Without you being at the hospital daily, making sure he was cared for by the attending staff, I don't believe I would be with the love of my life today. Again, Words cannot express my gratitude and appreciation. Love, Danny. Mm. I think mm. we all feel that. I think yeah. we all feel that. Maybe, maybe not to the degree that that Danny does, but yeah, okay. I, I, I was. Well, you know that love uh, line, and uh, it it was uh, that what that what a nice that was really nice. Um, uh, and what a what a fucking mess that 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 week it was like a week and it was a year kind of as well yeah but yeah. um you know um uh, it's really that you said a lot of really nice things about me that right but i do want to say this mm -hmm. and i love you charles let's let's say that but I love you too, man. but but so i set up the levi love line because well, molly compton set it up for me i'm like because people will call me and and I remember Curse uh, Mackey called, you know, and I'm like, well, fuck, you know, I, I can hold the, I'll hold the phone next next to, you know, so I'm just holding the phone, mm -hmm. and and you know, everybody that called is like, hey Charles, da, 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 da. and then they then they start bawling, so I'm standing holding the phone, crying with somebody else crying, and Charles is lying there, and and I'm like, well, this this is not the way to do this, you know, mm. and, um, and it's weird how little things grow into other things. So yeah. then, um, I, I start to play the messages to Charles. Um, <clears throat> I remember who's that band from England that called Charles, uh, unbelievable. Those guys are unbelievable. Oh, EMF, EMF. EMF. EMF, right? Yeah. And so this guy's this like, oi, fucking hell, babadab, you know, oi, Charles, <laughs> what the fuck? And and I had it on quite loud in the in the room. And one of the nurses came in, she's like, what's going on? And I'm like, people are calling from all over the damn world for this guy. And 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 she kind of went, oh, like that. And I thought, okay, that's a much better tool than just saying, yeah. can you please look after my friend? So I turned the volume up and I just kept doing that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And um, I called up the guys from um, Dark Matter. We picked up a box of bags of coffee and 
and it's weird, you know, you go up to one of the nurses or the doctors, like, hey, can I bother you for a minute? They're just like, oh, what does this fucker want? You know, yeah. well, I've got my own brand of coffee and still they're like, oh, what is this, a pitch? And you get a discount and a yeah. dark matter coffee. Oh, suddenly <laughs> everybody's like, oh, hello. You know, and we just start, <laughs> we just start giving the coffee out, you know, and um, yeah. little by little. <laughs> You know, we we uh, we won people over, and and uh, what a what a yeah what a, what a time that was. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. I know. I called that line a few times, and uh, I mean, I, I I was I was trying to keep it positive. I, I knew this was going to be played into his ear while he was in a coma, um, and I I was trying so hard not to break up. But in one of the calls, I, I I did. I just lost it by the end of it. I was like, just please be okay, man. Just please be okay. Well, and and, uh, and it, it it was a really. I mean, it was heartbreaking, but it was also this really lovely window mm -hmm. into Charles. Like somebody called and they're like, 23 years ago, <laughs> you shared a salad with me <laughs> in Pittsburgh. You know, yeah. and when I when I told Charles that, like a couple of weeks after we heard it the first time, Charles was like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. You know, yeah. like yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was uh it was really uh uh -huh. it, it was a bad time but it it was uh it was, it was a time for everybody to come together is what it yeah. was and, yeah. and, and yeah. people did and it was beautiful and, and your part in that is no small thing um mm -hmm. damn yeah. Thank uh, i you, mean Martin. this mr atkins <laughs> and this <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> the uh we need to get we need to get Levi one of these, by the way. Tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll have a look down in the basement. So, yeah. uh, um, <laughs> in the crypt. <laughs> you're in the crypt. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess we can get this uh, get this officially started. Then, um, okay. one, we would like to congratulate you on the recent award for your museum, Post Punk of Industrial Music, Post Punk yeah. and Industrial Music. I'm a proud founding member. Um, can you Thank tell you. us about some of the museums you visited as a child and what kind of impact that had on you? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, as a kid in England, mm -hmm. you go to some very uh, old places. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I, I, in, I, I grew up in a town called Durham, which is close to Newcastle. Yeah. And they had like the bones of St. Cuthbert from <laughs> 11, 20 something, you know, um, mm -hmm. w went to a, a, there's a museum in Nuneaton where I was born um, for, for a, a famous author, um, uh, George Eliot, who was actually a, a woman that took a man's name, which is <laughs> appropriate to talk about that on, you know, around women's international women's day. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I think the the first museum that really kind of resonated with me was uh, I went to the Hearst Castle in California. Oh, heavy there! And oh, and wow. I'd read about that that place. Uh, there was an actor called David Niven, and he had two books: "The Moon's a Balloon" and "Bring on the Empty Horses." And he yeah. talked about being at Hearst Castle and the guys you know, creating wars with the Hearst media empire. And and he talked about playing uh, a pool and the, taking a phone call and going to the pool, you know, mm. with these, with these, and, and like midnight liaisons. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was the first place I'd been that, that, that was of my time, before my time, but, more of my time than fucking St. Cuthbert, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, uh, so, uh, but I, I don't think any of that had an influence on me starting the museum. Mm. It wasn't like yeah. I got the museum bug at an early age. It, it yeah. was more that I thought it would be crazier not to start the museum than to start it. Yeah. In the same way, when I started my label, I didn't know what was ahead of me, but I knew for a fact 
I couldn't fuck things up any worse than major independents and major labels had fucked things up on my behalf. Yeah. So that was a really liberating place to be. And, um, and, you know, going back to this, this first few weeks with Charles, um, you know, when, when, when family came up from Georgia, mm -hmm. um, th there's a couple of people who weren't allowed to go to Charles's room and just on an impulse, I'm like, well, come visit the museum, you know, right? Yeah. And yeah. and I think the museum was like a, a few months old at that point. Yeah. I, you could still hear your voice echoing when you were in there. Now it's just, it's so full of stuff. Yeah. And, um, and just seeing the impact that that had on Charles's family, sisters and, and children. Um, oh, yeah. And there was a kind of a, to me, it was still, you know, hey, sorry, we're trying to get things together. Yeah. But but for everybody that visited, it had this, uh, there was a reverence to it. Like, well, we're in a museum. I'm like, well, okay, you know. But we went downstairs and we printed shirts and we got whiskey for the adults and chocolate milk for the kids. And, and I sat on the couch and I thought, this isn't just a pile of stuff in a room. Yeah. There's something yeah. going on here, you know, and yeah. um, and the reaction of your kids, Charles, you know, um, it it was it was <clears throat> really special, yeah, 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 yeah. They still talk about it, you know. Beautiful. I tell you, Beautiful. that was really great. Um, the uh, I'm sitting in the base for the archives because that's where it should be. I have one here, but I'm sending one back, and. Uh, Make these congratulations to to the um, ratings on on the, the uh, museum, big time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still, you know, I miss you so much. You know, I really want to, really want to play. I really think we should get some together eventually, uh, soon, soon enough. You know, and just go at it. I mean, we can do like Dave, like John Waters do. Just come to the show and well, you know, wave everybody on to play, you know. Yeah. 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 There, there, there are other other artists that are really good that would love to have the opportunities that I had, you know. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I remember playing, I remember when I left uh, a pig face show and one of my friends uh said to me, he goes, that I played with when we were in the, back in the day, and he was like, Leave just do me a favor, man. You know, you you know Martin Atkins. And I go, yeah, he goes, he goes, yeah. I say, yes, yeah, right. You turned me on the killing joke. He turned me on the killing joke. Him, and I don't know if you remember Ivona, Martin, they turned yeah. me on the killing joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw the name of, I say, saw the name Killing Joke in her album collection. And I was with Fallen Pieces, and I said, Wow, that's a cool name, and let's let's put that one on. <laughs> and yeah. now that, that was it, you know. I you know I was I was hooked, but um, yeah, that was a, one span. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I was, I was even though I I, you know, I never met uh the singer, jazz, know, yeah, jazz. <laughs> I saw the video when he <laughs> fell off the boat. <laughs> yeah. That was terrible. Yeah. 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 Jazz yeah. is uh jazz is something else. But we've both known a bunch of yeah. lead singers. <laughs> like you know, you know what I'm saying? He <laughs> yeah. was talking and also he was gone. Yeah. I go, wow. Yeah. Is, yeah. is, he, is he alive? Because <laughs> so, he was gone. What well, one of my favorite stories about well, just a story about jazz. Um Andy Rourke from the Smiths and um, TAFE, who who replaced, uh, was before Paul Raven. You'd see them playing, and uh, one of, TAFE would kind of twist his body, and one of his legs was bent you know, in his position. And Jazz had gone to the bathroom or something. He comes back into the rehearsal space. He sees this bass player with, with his legs bent, and from behind, kicks him behind his knee, 
So he collapses, falls over backwards. And Jazz is like, you stand up straight when you're on stage with Killing Joke. Mm. Like, what? We're not in the army, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was something else. But um, <laughs> to lose... <laughs> To to lose Geordie last year was really uh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. unexpected, and and we we all played together. Charles, you did uh, yeah. you did a few weeks with the Damage Manual. Yeah, and, um, yeah. He's David Niven. He's a yeah. David Niven. Yeah, of rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. and 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 I see. I I go on the Killing Joke thread sometimes, and you know you yeah. see people like, well, he could never be replaced, and this and that. I. I certainly don't wish for Big Paul and Youth and Jazz not to carry on. Oh, and no doubt. I, but J Jody can't be replaced. No. But somebody could play his parts. There's yeah. a world of difference between Jody, mm. cigarette, tequila, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> just yeah. his, his effortless style. Somebody could learn those parts and regurgitate them. Yeah. But yeah. He, will, he will never be replaced. No. No. No, no, no. You know, I, I uh, they were playing for the uh, the Laugh at Your Peril tour, and they had come through Seattle, and I had just just seen this show. They, they're they're one of my favorite acts of all time. I was lucky enough to grab one of Paul's sticks from the stage, um, and I'm walking around the edge of uh, the off ramp, and there's this dude standing outside smoking a cigarette, and it's Jordy, and I'm like. I'm a little, mm. I, just a tiny bit tipsy at the time. I'm like, mm. Big Paul, and stick my hand out. He grabbed my hand, pulled me in, gave me a big hug. Didn't correct me. <laughs> <laughs> and let me, I got about halfway back to where I was going, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> did I right. literally just call Jordy Big Paul? I'm like, oh, God damn, I did. So I, I reached out to Mont after that, and uh, it, it, I was like, "Dude, please, if you if you're in contact, tell him that idiot that called him Big Paul knows who he is <laughs> in Seattle, and is so sorry." I was just a little overwhelmed, you know. Well, so Mont Mont was just in the thick of it down in Miami there when we played the Kitchen Club. Um, that was. Uh, that's uh skinny puppy were there as well yeah. i don't think they played they were on the way somewhere i don't know what was going on there's a great picture, a picture of yeah, jazz yeah. me kevin Dwayne, uh jordy jordy cigarette you know and um uh, we went on stage that night and jazz said we're, we're gonna go on stage uh we want to be led on stage with ski torches i'm like oh okay <laughs> What's that? I wonder what that is. Well, this is a low ceiling club, and ski torches are like flares. The, the <laughs> are on the end of ski poles. You go when you're going down the mountain in a in a James yeah. Bond film. <laughs> and I mean, it's a miracle we didn't burn the place down. We did it oh three God. weeks later. We did it in Florida at the Anson Ford Theater, which is an outdoor venue, and it was just fantastic. Yeah. To do it indoors was just insane. Wow. Mm. Mm. What's up, so Joy? Um, What's your answer? Oh, Martin, in your museum, you have like a ton of uh, rare music related memorabilia being showcased. And uh, one of those items uh, came in the form of a promotion of uh, the Nine Inch Nails album, uh, Year Zero. And oh, right. I was wondering. Um, it's a military style call box. It supposedly puts you in the recipient in contact with Trent Reznor. Uh, do you know how many were made and how did that work exactly? Yeah. Well, so this is, uh, I, I'm happy to tell you about that, but it's also a story about what's going on with the museum. You know, okay. um, somebody dropped off this ammo box with a stencil year zero. I'm like, yeah, okay. Never heard of that band, you know, and uh, it sat in the museum for like six months. I think I used it to prop a photograph up. And then I think Tom, uh, Studio Tom, was like, "This is the year zero. I'm like, "Oh, okay." It's like, and we so we opened it up. Inside is a phone. I think for Trent to call you. Okay. <clears throat> Ten buttons, patches, stickers, flyers. Uh, art is resistance. 
a stencil, a pen, a bandana, and a hat, and an inventory list of everything that's supposed to be in there. There was only 100 made. They only know where 23 of them are, and it's exceedingly rare for the phone to still be with them. Mm. Wow. Um, mm. And it was, it was, you know, there was a period where everybody was doing crazy shit. Jesus built my hot rod. They sent out oil Ooh, cans, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alice in Chain, box of dirt. Mm -hmm. Some That's genius it. at the label. Go, oh, well, I know. Let's send out a box of dirt. And so they <laughs> FedExed out boxes of dirt. And so this was <laughs> this was of that time period. Yeah. Rob Rob Sheridan created it. And I think we, we've got a message out to Rob to get more details so we can be more museum-like about mm -hmm. all of this. But, um, I mean, <laughs> just incredible donations, um, just almost daily. I mean, yeah. honestly, almost every day. It just doesn't stop. There was a, a killing joke aluminum base flight case uh, online. I'm like, mm. oh, that's nice, you know. And there was a conversation. Somebody was showing the inside. Uh, it wasn't youths because it wasn't a Rickenbacker cutout. Looked like one of Ravens. And then somebody bought it and blah, blah, blah. And then this guy contacts me. Hey, I bought that case for the museum. Oh, when should man. I drop it off? You know, it's, it just keeps, uh, it just keeps miraculously happening. Mm. The Nine Inch Nail stuff is ridiculous. Yeah. The Thrill Kill Cult stuff has gone crazy. Shirts. Yeah. There's a poster with um, the Smashing Pumpkins opening up. Yeah. I mean, wow. just, I yeah. Yeah. I remember um, that. Has there been a rise in donations since you won the prestigious title of Best Museum in Chicago? Um, no, the, the donations just keep um, keep coming in. There's definitely been an uptick in uh, people booking tours and visits. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got KMFDM, well, ministry, then KMFDM at the end of this coming week. So there's mm -hmm. lots of people visiting Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then, of course, my friend runs the Magic Lounge uh, here in Chicago, which I think they just won number one magic venue. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he... Uh, this is what's happening now. So we're doing all these tours. I'm doing South by Southwest, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I thought, well, I'll have Sunday off and then I'll go teach on Monday. Well, now my Sunday's full because uh, my friend from the Magic Lounge wants to bring some friends and visit. So mm -hmm. more and more emails like, hey, we're coming in from Scotland. Uh, I think Saturday night, a ministry collector is coming in from Ireland. Um, mm. Letting him stay overnight. Oh, wow. I mean, it's uh, it it won't stop growing. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm making the trip this year. I, I my my roommate has already graciously uh, offered to make sure I've got plane fare out to get there. Oh, that's nice. So uh, that's great. And I, I will be bringing that uh, that skinny puppy um, thing that I talked to you about the uh, the one with all the signatures on it. Um, I, I've been wanting to build a shadow box. I think you're. You're aware the last few years have been a little tragic for me, and uh, it's kind of kept me from doing a bit. But uh, it seems like I've turned the corner and I'm back on top of what I'm doing. So I'm I'm trying to get that ready for you now. Um, but well, uh, I I appreciate that. I just just I'm happy to I'm always happy to give people a tour of the place and tell some stories. But yeah. I, sometimes I just like sitting there. Yeah, you know, because yeah. it's like. It's weird because it's like it's all there. It's like it enables me to just sit, you know. Yeah. But so this this you you mentioned a, a difficult. You've been going through a difficult time, and mm -hmm. and hasn't this hasn't been a great year for me, yeah. just personally. And I came up one of my slides for for South by Southwest. I I talk about keeping things local because of what's mm -hmm. happening in the Bridgeport neighborhood. The Ramova Theater is now up and running, Charles, $46 million, Whoa. you know? Wow. And the neighborhood, the neighborhood is really kicking up. The guys wow. from Jackalope, um, John and January from Jackalope Coffee, 
bought a bar across the street from the room over. They're calling it Electric Funeral. I was just there this afternoon. They're, they're wow. ripping the paneling wow. out, getting to it. But wow. one, this one of my slides says, look, maybe I have this new local view because of my last year. And, I, and this slide is like my hospital bed. You know, I nearly died from uh, uh, blood clots on my lungs. I was in ICU for seven days. Yeah. And then, then I have a walker, and then I had, after the walker, I was still using the walker, but I would go to Target and go around with the Target shopping cart because it's yeah. like I'm yeah. you're just another person with a Target shopping cart. You're yeah. not somebody with a walker. And then yeah. my walking, my cane, and mm -hmm. then nothing. And so it, I, I've got that visual in my head of like, as bad as thing looked, things looked when I was in the hospital bed, there is a path, you know, uh, yeah. via the, the target shopping cart. There is uh -huh. a path. <laughs> and and that's been helpful to me a few times since then. I'm like, well, okay, yeah. this is this now, but pretty soon, yeah. 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 Wow. That uh, Bridgeport is, uh, used to be Mayor Daly's. Uh, mm -hmm. Used to be his up. Uh, to his church, yeah, and uh, he had a history where the White Sox play in Comiskey Park on the other side of State Street was the dividing line between the Italians, Irish, few Polish, and then on the east side of State Street, it was black, black, it was uh, Cabrini, and no, it was. Stanley uh, Gardens. Uh, is that the Robert Taylor Homes? Yeah, Robert Taylor Homes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you had Invisible not too far from Robert Taylor Homes. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and now <laughs> I remember <laughs> I used to go, man, It's a, it was a hot dog, uh, hamburgers, hot dog stand right on the corner of Cermak and State. Yeah. And, and it was still there when you had Invisible. Yeah, and I would I would take a chance and still and walk down there and give me some give me a burger or something, but it was it was far from imagining that what it is now. Oh, oh I I was just over there last Sunday. I took students to uh, twenty one twelve and Fort Knox, House yeah. of Blues, and then and then Reggie's, and yeah. next just next door to Invisible, Mercedes uh -huh. dealership. Wow! Wow! <laughs> yeah. that is I mean, serious? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy over there. It's wow. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I remember when Nitzer Ebb moved in Chicago. Yeah, and and uh, Bond had a, a little production studio in, in there. Yeah, and I saw Rudy Ray Moore, the comedian, Rudy Ray Moore, in his uh, okay. doing a commercial. <laughs> wow! And uh, yeah. yeah, I remember. Uh, I said, hey, let's go see Martin. And uh, I was going to be done. And uh, Bond said, uh, nah, we, we got to finish this up. So I, I, I realized, wow, that is close, you know. Uh, man, it's different now. It's all got to, that's Michigan Avenue, Indiana Avenue. Yeah. Those are four lane streets. Yeah. Those are Mecca's. And, and uh, so Reggie's is now the, the bar side, the venue side where we play with Pig Face. Then yeah. there's the second floor where we had the party. Then yeah. the third floor, they've got the roof garden with a bar up there. There's a oh, new yeah. bar open next door. The whole yeah. street is just chaos. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That was a that was a hard neighborhood. Yeah. My mom, my mom and my uncles used to terrorize that turf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dusapo High School. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I really so remember. So when 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 my my wife Katrina moved from Arizona, um, there she is, this gorgeous blonde, yeah. walking down the street. Cop cars were just like, "What are you doing in this neighborhood?" You know, and uh, uh, yeah, it was crazy. What a great space that was! A H gun yeah. video were were. It's another thing the museum's done. Uh, you remember. H gun video were on the seventh floor. And yeah. and then I pick up a, a little flyer and it's for the um the premiere of Head Like a Hole at Exit, where we filmed it on Wells with that yeah. weird metal igloo 
over the yeah. dance floor. And, right. and it's like, but it's no big deal. I think there's a Nitsa Ebb video premiering that night of Front 242 and Nine Inch Nails. And I think the whole the whole spiel about handcuff yourself to the bar was bigger than the Nine Inch Nails video. Nobody cared about a Nine Inch Nails video back then. But H-Gun video, Invisible mm. was on the third floor. H-Gun were on the seventh. And um, yeah. they were doing such cool stuff. They did Burning Inside, The Cage yeah. Tour, um, Killing Joke, Money's Not Our God, Nitsa Ebb, Front 242, uh, yeah. Flavor Flav was in there one day doing a video. I yeah. mean, it was there was some shit going on. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. That was a hell of a summer. That was yeah. great. Yeah. I miss you, Michael. I mean, yeah. So, so now, so you know, I guess uh, they, David J is playing bass with Kurt Chris Curse. Yeah, Curse and Rona, and yeah. Uh, yeah. I I don't know how I got talking with David. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I just send people messages, you know, but he's a super nice guy. Oh, I remember. I was going to go see him. He was going to stop by the museum like eight months ago and, and his sound check went late and he's like, yeah, come on by the show. And he was playing like, I don't know, somewhere the Riviera or like yeah. the other it, exact other end of town. And I just, yeah. I just didn't go, but super nice guy. And it's great to see Curse and Rona. They seem yeah. to be really busy anyway, but yeah. this is going to be really good for them. Yeah. Yeah, Thank really. You. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I said, David J. I like David J. He's a good player for you to play. Yeah. yeah. But I, if I'm not playing, he should play. <laughs> you also yeah. just uh, did the the Shadow Mushless uh, new album with uh, Ali Joffrey. Um, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. 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 That's a, a yeah. big face alumni there. Yeah. Yeah, is the uh, the sitar that he used uh, the last show in Chicago? Mm -hmm. um, that's that's over at the museum. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. He was telling us stories about that sitar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, are you playing, Charles? Are you getting to pl play a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Daryl Hell has. Um, Abstinus, abstinus. Yeah. And uh, I have this thing, I have this, I'm learning how to, I'm trying to get my editing set up down pat. And it, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm setting it up, but I have a, a handy recorder. Oh, there you and go. It, uh, nice. And it, uh, it, it can record me, it can record. And I can record my bass onto it, and 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 it has a memory card, and I can right. send the files and everything. Huh. So yeah, my my neuropathy, it hurts when I'm not doing anything. When I'm not doing nothing, it it hurts. But I've been playing at least a half an hour or so or more a day, and uh, I had to sit it down, but. Uh, it's not going to deter me from not playing anymore. I'm going to play. Yeah. That's my tool. I'm going to play if I had to have, you know, a pick sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm going to yeah. figure out something, you know, yeah. but um, I just can't. I, I just, you know, and then I'm also putting together some songs, a you know, song, songs with Bangalore, and uh, I'm putting up soundscapes and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, I'll send you some that you listen. And then I've been getting a lot of a lot of stuff from uh, from people wanting me to listen to some of their ideas. <laughs> and you know, it's it's just fun. It keeps me active. You know, yeah. it's, uh, I wake up in the morning. I um, I go to the journals. I do my typing, and I do my memoirs. And I'm telling you. That's a lot of shit. That's like I, don't, I have to I have to put it together because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that I, that you know that I can I have to talk about or you know write about, and it's just so much. I'm not I'm like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, like a little less than halfway through my journeys. 
<laughs> I'm you know, applying myself. I'm doing it. It's going to be done. The book, you know, is going to be good. Uh, I'm talking, to, I'm re communicating with Groovy Man a lot, and he's been on up and up, and they're going on, Thrill Kill's going on tour. I think they Buzz. just left, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Buzz, uh, Buzz keeps in touch with me. That's great. Uh, That's great. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he's, you know, him and Frankie are like, you know, I'm still a cult. You know, a mammy has got to get better. I wish the best for her. Yeah. I want her to get her healthy together, her health together. She's got to yeah. get it healthier, you know. Yeah. Because we have a we have a we have a legacy to carry on. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and uh, she's, you know, I don't know what's the status, but uh Buzz told me she's doing all right. She got to go to go ahead and tour. So mm -hmm. I really, I, I, I wish the best for, her. you know, having cancer or a tumor is not a good thing, you know, right, right, not a good, no, not right. a good thing. And it's uh, like a, it's a, it's a whole, it's yeah. a whole new thing to navigate, you know, yeah. like, you know, I remember Jolly Roger, who just he just yeah. turned seventy six a few days ago. Oh yeah, I wish him a birthday happy. Birthday. Yeah, uh, he <laughs> he pulled me into the back of the pig face bus, uh -huh. like there was a what we did pig face, we did murder ink, we did we did something else, killing joke. It was all going on at the same time, and uh, he sits me down. He's like, "You can't keep doing this." I'm like, "What are you talking about, old man?" You know, <laughs> he said, "It's like you can't." He said, "If you just keep throwing yourself around on stage like this." It's yeah. it's gonna come off the rails, you know. And yeah. I'm like, fuck you, you, you know, you know. And here we are, you know, like. <laughs> We're old, you know, I know. You know. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I mean, we're just we're just navigating this shit, and it's strange because uh, it's also public, isn't it? I mean, I don't yeah. mind talking about my shit. I'm happy to talk about my sobriety and um, mm. and all the stuff in the in the hope that that. Anybody will be like, oh, okay, well, that if that fucking maniac can quit, mm -hmm. maybe there's a chat, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a whole new thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm telling you, I can't. I moved to a state where they legalize pot. They have the best grade of pot in the world. Next to Amsterdam, and I can't smoke none of them. <laughs> I can't do a damn thing. I get, I get uh, chastised if I even talk about. It. So wow. I better keep it down right now. You, you can't, you can't do edibles. No, because I ate some edibles, and I passed out, and I went to the hospital. Wow. And that's when my heart was the pace. I have a pacemaker. Okay. And uh, they haven't done enough research to uh, to actually subscribe me to pot, you know. Okay. But I'm telling you, the little ink, you know, I did. It does help me as far as uh, spirit wise. Yeah. The times I have, and I always when I play music, people don't people don't believe me. But I'm gonna tell you, I never played high yeah. on drugs. After the show, I will get fucked up. But before the show, I can't, you know, I couldn't, you know, just just a high from playing, from doing the show live. Uh, I'm not the greatest player in the world, but I'm gonna tell you something, music gets a hold of me and it's in my soul. And I just have to, I just have to, you know, let it, let it breathe. Mm -hmm. And so I remember one time we played at the Trocadero in Philadelphia, Martin, mm -hmm. and we were all there and we was almost near the end of the tour. And uh, I guess we were pretty spirited, you know, cause the Trocadero was like playing the Metro, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, I drank a little, you know, and smoked some pot and, uh, 
And Christoph goes, uh, come on, man, let's do some coke. And I was like, nah, 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 come on. Then you're going to do something. I go, no, 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 no. So I did a little. We went on stage and we started playing. We rock, we're rocking. And all of a sudden, the power went out. All the power went out except the bass. <laughs> <laughs> the bass, that's not the bass. And I'm saying, I said, oh, my God. Everyone there in the pot, in, in in the theater. And I'm like thinking, oh, no. And plus, you know, I got real self-conscious. And I hung in there. You know, I hung in there and kept playing. But I knew that if I had not done anything, if I had stuck to my guns, that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been great. Yeah. yeah. So I well, learned my lesson not well, to do it. I, yeah. I I love that place. That was one of yeah. our, I would call that like a hometown gig for us. There was a yeah. few. Of, Denver was one at the Gothic Denver. or wherever we used to play. We always, we we did like four Thanksgivings in a row there. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. the Trocadero in yeah. Philly, it was in Chinatown. Next yeah. door was the fire station. And oh, so, yeah, yeah. so one day, I don't know what's going on. I end up talking to these fire dudes, fire station dudes firemen and they're like yeah they were fans of a bunch of different bands and um they're like well yeah we sometimes we're, we we'll pull out the bagpipes <laughs> and i'm like what well, are you yeah, talking i about? remember that yeah and i'm like get on stage with pig face tonight and i gave him a couple of hundred dollars and like three bottles of whiskey and yeah. they, you know and i used to love that one it's like ladies and gentlemen pig face and they, we've got the screens up and here's these yeah. five guys, and they wore the whole regalia yeah. with the bagpipes. Yeah. <laughs> People are just like, what? People have probably yeah. never seen bagpipes played before. <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, man. Yeah, well, yeah. that was, that, I remember that. That was great. Yeah. That was a great time. That Trocadero was great. Yeah. I love the place. I don't yeah. know. Uh, I know one thing, it was, uh, was, uh, they had a bar at the very top. Yeah. So you go to the top. It's like the fourth um, balcony. Yeah. And uh, all hell is just break loose in there. Yeah. You know? it, was a real, it, was a, it was a really good venue. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. And then you go in the dressing rooms behind the stage. And uh, that was really cool. That 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 was kind of good. You know, it had it was it was one of those places where you could be in the dressing room, you'd open the window, and all the fans are down in the alley. Yeah. You know, yeah, you could yeah. be like, yeah, it was, yeah. it was good. Yeah, it yeah. was. That's right. It was a good I place. Yeah, yeah, Chinatown. Oh, I love Chinatown there. You, everything was right in the vicinity. You just yeah. go, do sound check, go eat some Chinese food. Yeah. You know, that was a great place. You know, yeah. I wonder if it's still there. I don't I, know. I, I think I heard they might be reopening it. Oh wow! They closed it. Yeah, down. yeah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, I remember it was William Tucker. We played there with Thrill Kill, and some girl was a fan of a fan of ours. Got locked in the place. She got locked up in it, and so it was late at night, and we're walking. I'm walking around, and I heard someone. And it was a poor girl. She goes, I, I can't. They, they locked me in here. And so we wow. squeezed the door and she squeezed through. We held the, the door, the, those doors, and she squeezed out. And she said, Oh, I'm so, so thankful for you. Because she was panicking because she said she was scared of the place. Well, wow. you know, yeah, at nighttime, you know. I, I remember with um, William, God bless William. Um, yeah. I mean, he was a handful, but. Um, <laughs> We yeah. we we had a tour, maybe ninety three, uh -huh. uh, maybe ninety two. Paul Raven had given Mary Biker like six hundred pounds in England, and just said, "We're doing pig face, get on a plane." And Mary just was like, "This guy's out of his mind." And Mary just went and drank for her, for a week with six hundred pounds. <laughs> So well, I, I met up with Raven at the at the raw bar. Yeah. And, okay. uh, 
and we were like one singer down. And Ra I remember Raven, we were eating, and Raven says, points with his knife, we should take this guy. And mm -hmm. Dirk was in the back, cook it with oh, his yeah. long red hair. Yeah. D Dirk, come on out. And Dirk's like, look, you, he was in 77 Luscious Babes at the time. Yeah. And uh, he's like, look, I don't, I, I don't know all the songs. I can't do this. And we're like, D it, don't worry. There's like six, seven singers, you know. <laughs> and it was, who was the girl from Fetching Bones? Oh, my oh. God. Uh, Hope uh, Nichols. Hope Nichols. Hope Nichols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable, <laughs> right? It's Hope, Esh. Um, I don't know who else was singing. Uh, I don't know who else was singing. But by the time we get to Washington, D.C., like a flu has gone around the camp. <laughs> and and uh, Esh is in bed. Hope Nichols is in bed. You're in bed. In fact, I remember uh, I called around. I think we got a doctor. And I called around everybody's rooms, sent yeah. out for Chinese food. Mm. And William Tucker, God bless him, I think he slid the fire hose under your door. Yeah. And turned the fire hose on. Oh, I'm like, you know, how, how can we all come together to overcome <laughs> this illness which has swept through the camp? You know, yeah. Yeah, I, you wanted to kill him. I you wanted, wanted to kill him. To kill him. But, I just washed my clothes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my and, God. And, but it ends up with like, there's just half of us on stage and it's yeah. me and Dirk singing all the songs. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah the the, the fire hose went off, and I was like, "What's what the hell is? What, it's dark in the room, and it looks like snow. Snow is in there. Yeah, yeah. All the clothes I had. We finally, we finally got to do laundry, and the clothes were folded up. I had to fold them up." I don't know why I didn't put them in a the suitcase. And all of them got totally destroyed. Yeah. But back in those days, though, do you remember Doc Martin started making pants and shirts? Somebody, yeah. there was always people just like giving us boxes of yeah. shit, you know, yeah. here you go, you know, yeah. 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 They, yeah I remember uh, they never had a, uh, they never had my uh, size. Never had my size. Mm. Size 13, 14, you know, for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and the pants and shirts were in. I had a Blackhawk jersey. I found a Blackhawk jersey that was, I didn't never, I never seen it before with the Indian and everything in the, in the bargain bin in England. And Doc mm. Martin's, they, I didn't have nothing. From Doc Martin's because they didn't have nothing to fit me. So I was like, man, and I saw this jersey. Like, oh wow. And I got the jersey that fitted, the sleeves are long. Huh. Uh I never forget it. And that was the one thing. Everyone got Doc Martin's. I got a Chicago Blackhawk jersey. <laughs> I think it was in, in Liverpool. Not Liverpool, huh. but it was somewhere at, at a mall in, in oh no, it was Leeds. Leeds in uh, Leeds City of Leeds, you know. Was that through yeah. a cult? Yeah, yeah, and I found it, you know. But I almost got. I remember uh, when we uh, went to see. We went to Liverpool to start the tour with EMF, and uh, I put on my 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 big trench coat. It was like a fire fence trench coat, but it was black. Yeah. And I had my Gestapo boots and everything in there and my drill kill hat. And uh and I went and I was went across the street and I turned around and the, the double ducker bus moved by <laughs> went by just inches from my face and I saw the expressions of everyone's face were in shock and horror, you know. <laughs> Because I almost walked out there and got ran over. Yeah. And Sean from uh, Happy Happy Mondays. <clears throat> yeah, I had to watch him <clears throat> because he would terrorize and get him. He was hot. Uh, he was quite a troublemaker. 
Yeah. Or a prankster. And uh, he says, you look, look at you, mate. You made all those people cringe. <laughs> that was so cool. Can you do it again? I go, no, man. I almost, <laughs> I almost had my face wiped off, you know. In fact, they moved my head a little bit because I looked at the wrong way. Yeah. You know, crossing the street. Yeah. And, you know, and then I went across it and went, walked down the street and I almost got, you know, uh, I got really mad because I asked the people, they said some fish and chips. And I was like, some fish and chips? What the fuck is that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, I need some paper towels. You know, what do you mean, mate? You don't get no paper towels here. You got to eat that shit like that, you know. So I had to just take my take the back of his shirt and wipe my mouth off. <laughs> you know, there was no napkins in the place. Yeah, no um, napkins in there. But the chips, yeah. I didn't know chips were french fries. Yeah. You know, so it was, that was good. That was that was my experience in Liverpool. Changed all the signs in the marquee. He showed all the signs in the marquee and changed them up. He didn't, <laughs> you know. And I'm telling you, man, you you can't do this. Mary Biker no more. We're gone. They were they left they left me with him, you know. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. left me with Sean. Yeah, yeah. he's a maniac. He's yeah, on he's, TV. One, what? He's still going. Yeah, oh, still going. Is. Yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, Martin, mm-hmm. I follow your Facebook page and I love how openly you talk about sobriety to help destigmatize it. Um, congratulations, right? Uh, being on the cusp of hitting three years on your benchmark, man. I'm, thank it's really thank inspiring. you. Inspiring. Yes. Um, yes. I suffer from alcohol addiction and at the end of this month, I'm going to hit a year. Um, Boom. Woohoo. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, uh, these aren't easy feats to accomplish. I mean, what ultimately led to your decision to become sober? Well, I mean, I started drinking when I was 11 <laughs> and in, in the north of England. And, you know, if, you, if you've ever drunk with an English person my age, we were trained by the system. So the pubs would open from 6 till 10.30. And that was it. So, and then it was made worse by the tradition of drinking in rounds. So mm-hmm. let's say you go to a bar with five people. Yeah. I will buy the first round. You buy the next one. Charles will buy the next one, right? Boom, boom, boom. So you've had five pints. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs> the bar's only open for another half hour, but you want another drink. So the way it works is if I buy another round, we've had six, the other four people still have to buy a round. So yeah. it's even and fair. So you end up drinking five pints in four hours and then five more pints in 30 minutes. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, and that, so, so that's how, you know, that's how English people are. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and then, you know, of course I'm in a band with, with John and, and we're up to all kinds of stuff and early eighties, Los Angeles, um, you know, alcohol was the least of it really. So, yeah. So after I decided to quit uh, PIL and um, and I, I, I'd stopped drinking, I had 16 years sober after mm. that. And then my dad died and, um, and I, I, it was very difficult for me not to drink when my dad died. I was, you know, I couldn't speak at his funeral. Uh, it was yeah. really difficult. And then I had a few years of like, okay, well, my dad died. Do, 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 you know, and and then just over maybe three years and a couple of months ago, I just said, you know what, this is no longer a tribute to my dad. I'm just using this, you know, and I and I decided to stop again. And yeah. uh, it isn't always easy. It feels easier now with probably two hundred different alcohol-free beers to choose from. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. When I stopped the first time, there was uh, Klaus Thaler and O'Doul's. You know, that was, yeah, it. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. that um, was it. But now there's this huge variety. I might have I might have one or two alcohol-free beers. Some people, uh, it's difficult for them to go near that because it's a trigger. For me, it's just like I like the taste, you Tasty. know? Yeah, it tastes 
Yeah, Jesus. And, uh, uh, and, and um, I I try and tap into the edgy things that make me dangerous. You know, I think we think that we're more dangerous when we're drunk or high, and uh, we're not. We're just out of control. Sure. Yeah, and, yeah. and and to tap into those mindsets when you're sober that's really dangerous because you can you can look at it and control it some cases push it over the edge you know yeah but yeah. congratulations on your first year that's that's big yeah it is thank you good yeah, for I you man that. good for you yeah, you're gonna have four or five more. read but uh i'd like to ask one more question before i read that statement to you like do you have any advice for those struggling with addiction um well um yeah to the extent that you're comfortable, reach out for help. Um, you know, there's usually, there's usually one or two people bouncing around that I'm, that I'm, uh, conscious of mm -hmm. be, be trying to be supportive. Um, don't be afraid to reach out because sometimes, you know, just that little pat on the head, like, you know, you know, I, I was surprised. I think the first time I tweeted like, hey, uh, you know, 20 weeks sober, you just think, hey, you know, and then 50 people are like, fuck, yeah. Uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, that can be I, I, I don't do meetings, but whatever it takes to help, you know, uh, find somebody that you can reach out to and, and, and we'll we'll talk you through some difficult times. But but also, don't be afraid to try it. And sometimes it takes a minute to stick. Yeah. You know, just if you if you try it and like I I did three days and I had another. Trip, all right, well when you're ready, try it again. You know, and um, it 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 takes a while to get into it. It takes a while to get out of it. That's that's what I tell people all the time. I I did meth for twenty five years, and uh, I stopped in 08. And, uh, you know, it just, you know, wasn't, wasn't a thing I wanted to do anymore. So, um, but I, the, the perspective it gave me and it was exactly that. It, it took me a long time to build up to something like that. And I figured it was probably going to take me a long time to stop, but thankfully it didn't, but, uh, you know, it wasn't the first time I had tried to stop. Um, right. and, uh, you know, I, I always figured I was going to be like Hunter S. Thompson or William S. Burroughs. You know, I'll probably yeah. be doing drugs my whole life. And yeah. and now, I, you know, since 2008, I have no desire for, for that stuff anymore. None. And uh, and it feels good. And when I see people that are trying to trying to get straight in, in whatever way, alcohol in particular, that, that's what took my dad at 56. I'm going to be 56 in April. And oh. it's, a, it's a hard birthday coming up. Um, my dad drank enough for me and like 30 yeah. other people. And, uh, it, but this, this last few years, I've noticed that my drinking friends started dropping around the same age my dad did. And, uh, and, and that's been difficult to deal with. So I, I am so truly, truly glad that you are where you are. And Joey, you're where you are. And Levi, you're where you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm where I am because it feels so much better on this side of it. Yeah. 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 Definitely. There's, a, there's a romanticism around alcohol, the writer and the whiskey, mm -hmm. the guitarist and the heroin, yes. the but 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 whatever it is. And yeah. it's all a crock of shit, you know. Yeah. And it's sad when when people emulate their heroes. Uh, and go down that path. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I, I think that um, it seems to me like we're coming out of that phase of the world where that stuff is cool. Cause it fucking isn't. Yeah. I saw, I saw um, heroin just destroyed Keith Levine. One of my favorite guitarists, yeah. lucky enough to play with him and Jordy and, and it just destroyed him. He, he, he was talented enough to be a member of the clash but um, yeah. a founding member of public image and inspire the edge with his yeah. sound yeah. and then not around long enough for people to go, well, Hey, edge, wh wh why, mm -hmm. wh you know, yeah. seems like you got your sound yeah. from Keith, you know, uh, he just, he just disappeared. 
it's really yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. That was a that was a hard loss too. Yeah. 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 I uh I found the most important thing for me was having a solid supportive system of friends. Yeah. You know, rock bottom is the place where I built myself back up. And I like to tell them that they saw me at my absolute worst. So now they get to see me in my absolute best. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to just thank uh Curse Mackey, Rona Rushart, Raleigh Malenikon, uh Bradley Bills, Phil Owen, and Kevin Key for all the various roles they've played, support provided, and having never judged me throughout. Thank you to all these wonderful people. That's yeah. great. And 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 while you while you while you're mentioning that, you know, um Michael Alago, who was just notorious, uh, he signed Metallica when he was 23. And I think he was wilder than all the members of Metallica put together. I think yeah. at one point they were frightened of his uh, uh, indulgences. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to him casually um, one day about something else. And I mentioned drink and, and he stopped and he took, such care to to kind of check in on me that it really made me pause and without saying anything specifically and it was a few days you know i called him up a few days later i'm like wow you know that really had an impact without being overt mm -hmm. so it it's always the, the smallest thing that can get you to the next stepping stone and the next stepping stone and next thing you know you're you're out of the river you know yeah mm. thank you for that yeah thank you cheers for your sobriety yeah no, absolutely yeah. my water this cheers my yeah. juice my smoothie <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna tell you man i used to love that martinis <laughs> <laughs> i can't drink anymore i can't drink no more that's it yeah. So I have a a good woman and I'm, I plan on keeping her. And that's what I'm about. Yeah. You know? No, it's so a now, beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Do you, uh, do you have any travel plans, Charles? Are you are you able to travel? Yeah. Yeah. I uh I just have to know in advance and uh work it out because Danny uh Danny keeps me she she's with me all day, all the time. So if I travel, I try to find a deal where she can come to, and it's okay, you know. Yeah. You know, but uh, no, I have no problem. With that. Good. I was asking, you, how's drumming coming with you? How's your yeah, your how, how's your uh, physicality? I I haven't. I'm I'm fine. You know, I'm I'm walking around. Um, yeah. just got back on the treadmill. I dropped yeah. uh, six pounds in the last few weeks. Nice. I want to drop drop some more. Um, I just um, we just did an auction for some drum tracks. So mm. um, we're going to record at the muse on the main floor of the museum, mm. um, and we'll record to Pro Tools, Logic, Micro Cassette, Steve Albini's quarter inch machine. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have some fun. I've got a few students coming in to work with Tom. Uh, yeah. Really nice selection of microphones. And and we'll see. No, you know, it, it, I might go slightly crazy, but um, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to do that over spring break. Oh, okay. Sweet. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. I'm down with it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, uh, aside from Danny's, uh, uh, her dad's, uh, um, goodwill, goodwill tribute to her father, and then uh, that's in uh, Oshkosh, Milwaukee, which Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, call, I, I still think Wisconsin is Milwaukee, you know, but <laughs> and, but uh, so so that that's that's in uh, July, I think, or whatever. Okay, but but I think we're gonna try to work out, you know, travel. Because I want to go down the lakefront mm. really soon. I miss the lakefront. Yeah. I miss I miss taking my scooter and riding down to the lakefront. You know, uh -huh. man, nothing's like like Lake Michigan. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I don't, you know, I miss it so much. And uh, and tell Cole I'm still going to crush his legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harrison got away from me. He got away from me, and he came out good. 
<laughs> How is Cole yeah. doing? They're all they're all doing great. They're yeah. all doing great. Um, mm -hmm. That was the last time I think I saw you before before your hospital visit. You yeah. were on your scooter, yeah. and uh, you were here. We had dinner in the garden here at the house. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Was it Harrison's birthday? Yeah, it I might have it been was. Harrison. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah. I, here's what I remember: um, you'd yeah. had some edibles. Oh yeah, <laughs> and you brought you brought a turnip. <laughs> yeah, and I know. <laughs> and so you're in the kitchen, slicing yeah. this turnip. And I go out in the garden and uh, come back in a half hour later. Oh my God. And you're still kind of, kind of <laughs> you're completely yeah. hypnotized by this turnip. But, oh but it, it was a really, it was a really nice hang. And then um, I think a condo was here and then yeah. you went home. And then the next day you'd mm -hmm. left your jacket here. So me and yeah. Coley drove up to Evanston there, or almost yeah. Evanston. Then you let him have a go on your scooter. It was pretty yeah, great. Yeah. 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 I missed that thing. Oh, my yeah. God. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You turned into Baldrick for a second there, did you? Yeah. 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 Turnips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm telling you, listen, I ate some edibles uh, <laughs> when I was in rehab for uh, physical therapy. I had, had, uh, had Wolfgang get me. You know, it's some edibles. Yeah. And so I, I subconsciously ate one or two. And then I say, oh, no. I I, I ate them too quick. Because <laughs> they were like candy. So I'm going to eat yeah. three more. So I <laughs> three more. And the physical therapy did, uh, uh, oh my God. assistant was working. And she was like, Charles. And I had passed out. So I wound up going to the hospital. She wound up taking me, the ambulance took me to the hospital. And I wound up staying in the hospital for two weeks because they found that I had a uh, I had an irregular heartbeat. Oh, no. And that's when they put the fibrillator in. Oh, okay. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, that, and that, uh, that kicked off the, uh, the A hip, A fib, mm. you know. So I can't, I can't eat edibles. I can't eat smear. I can't do smear. I can't do nothing. Yeah. And not until I get, I'm going to the doctor Monday, and uh, I'm going to podiatrist Monday, but I'm going to to my regular doctor sometime next week, and he's going to let me know what uh, what can I do about maybe taking some edibles because I don't want to take drugs yeah. for, you know, my depression yeah. or anything. I don't, yeah. I want to do something natural, you know? Yeah. yeah. And maybe, maybe, maybe pot is a way to do it. Cause I tell you, when I smoke pot, I get so jovial. I can play everything, but mm -hmm. I cannot play on stage Unless it's like the near the end of the tour, and I will smoke pot then, yeah. and but no more like like at the Trocadero. But right. I was so mad, at, <laughs> so mad at myself. I want to punch myself oh, in my. the face, and oh, I want to my. beat up Christoph for for talking. Come on, come, come on, yeah. Yeah. Up the yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, everybody, let's go to the back of the bus. Let's party up. Yeah. I was like, no, that oh, stuff man. makes me paranoid. I wouldn't be able to get on stage after doing that. Yeah, no. But I'm telling you, smoking. <laughs> when I smoke pot, you know, uh, walking on stage uh, and playing, the only problem is I get into a certain part too much, and I miss my cue, <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah. "Wow, this is a good part." Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the drums, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, I didn't mess up, and 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 getting back. In 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 sync is the fun part, you know. Yeah. Like, got your ass, you know. My buzz used to say, <laughs> you know, but, as soon but as <laughs> with with you and Greta and yeah. Andrew Weiss, the three of yeah. you together, how yeah. how insane was that? Yeah, my goodness. I I I know. I, I was 
I just be an honor to be on there with Andrew Weiss, you know. Yeah. And uh, Greta, the first time I met her, she was playing with Moby. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was Tina from Talking Heads, so huh. I never told her that. I thought that was I saw her on stage. I go, that's Tina from Talking Heads, and you know, I was like, wow. And it was Greta. And little did I know, I'm gonna be, you know, I'm playing with her, you know. It's oh, wild. And, and she she introduced Pigface to uh, Randy Blythe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Wow. Because they're neighbors That's... from Richmond, Virginia. So she wow. said to me, I have a, because Mary forgot that he had a festival to do in England. Yeah. So we needed a singer for a couple of days. And, and Greta said, well, I know this guy. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, well, okay, what? What? Who is it? It's like, well, he's from Lamb of God. I'm like, well, I've never heard of wow. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that was such a bizarre name for me to see on that on that roster. And and, oh, and, and when I, but when I listened to it, I'm like, holy shit! Yeah, oh, my God. I'm goosebumps, yeah. goosebumps. goosebumps. Was, yeah, you know something, Martin. When I went to, it was at a rehearsal, and uh, Randy was there, there, and we were playing, and he when he hit that that. His tone on the mic when he hit the mic, I was like, "Whoa, yeah. this guy!" The, all the you know, all the all the vocalists that that sing like that, this guy, Hansy, he yeah. is the king. He's yeah. the James Brown of. Yeah, well, we're <laughs> like, what, what song do you want to do? It's like, well, how about Tapeworm? Like, all right, yeah. and he owned it. Oh, he owned yeah, it, yeah. and yeah, and yeah. so. Yeah, we started to invite people to rehearsals. And so yeah. there was 50 other people there just like, what wow. the hell? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, no, that that yeah. song in particular, that one that, that's a deep cut for me. And uh and mm-hmm. I'm I'm a huge, huge ogre fan. He's he's been a hero of mine forever. And uh so knowing anybody else does that song, sometimes, you know, get a little back of my head, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Can you but yeah. dude, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. oh my god, wow, yeah. he nailed it, dude. He yeah. nailed it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He, yeah, he did, man. He's yeah. Yeah, he, he his 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 tone, vocal tone was like, whoa. Yeah. It was like, man. All I've seen. Yeah, it made I've me start James. listening to Lamb of God, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. 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 For but sure. He was also um the nicest person like yeah. we were we we roll into baltimore and i get this text message there's a laundry in the dressing room who's got laundry <laughs> like i didn't have any laundry but if i had he would have done it you know <laughs> yeah, i mean that's awesome <laughs> you know oh, and uh um mm-hmm. it's 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 weird you know and there's danny carey just smiling and uh, <laughs> just just no trouble just trying to help you know yeah it's just fantastic it's just fantastic no yeah so i'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because that just brought up something very specific um one of the questions that we had or that i have um okay so covid really kind of kicked our asses for the last (laughs) leg of the pig face tour Um, yeah i've got my vip pass right here Mm -hmm. um that was devastating uh, for 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 all of us on the, on the west coast that didn't get to see that tour that was that was pretty devastating um yeah. now thankfully there's a wonderful blu-ray and a double album and i have them both and uh and and love it entirely um now i know that a project this size has serious complications and issues with scheduling and logistics and all that with so many different artists but that being said are there any plans for getting that leg of the tour on the road at any point and uh, uh you, you know i mean i'm sure i'm speaking for a lot of people here when i say that uh we'd, we'd all love some some more mayhem from you guys right so well i mean i'm just i finished my physical therapy actually friday so yes yesterday mm-hmm. um i got signed off from my physical therapy i'm gonna play my drums for the first time since 2019 Wow. In two weeks. Nice. You know, just, just, I, you know, I just haven't played. So that's, I think 
when we canceled. So, so there's two things for me. There's can I can I play the drums? Yeah. Can I play the drums like a maniac? <laughs> but then, over and above playing the drums, can I walk around a venue fifty times, up and down the stairs if necessary, on and off the bus, two block radius, whatever? Yeah. Because this is this is all on on my shoulders, yeah. and yeah. Um, so and that's as daunting as just getting behind the kit. Yeah. But um, I think um, I've been talking to Nick. Nick is three years sober now. Um, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so um, and he, he's feeling really good. And that's great to see. Um, yeah. I, I was chatting with Leslie. So that's how these things start. And we'll, we'll see. Um, mm-hmm. I think that um, – uh, we always want to stay out of the way of anybody else that's touring, you know, I, and um, mm-hmm. I think I was looking at doing some dates last year, mm-hmm. maybe. And then puppy announced the tour mm-hmm. and uh, I just thought, well, 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 we dodged a bullet there because they didn't just play one show in Chicago. They did three. Yeah. And I know yeah. people who would have flown up from Florida or were or from the UK were flying to see Puppy in Chicago and then yeah. LA and then you know so um um so so I mean the honest answer is I don't know but obviously um with so many bands kind of bowing out is it Front Two Four Two's last tour coming up. Yeah, it is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, I think that in November, that, you know, it makes me want to do it even more. And I understand. I see lots of bands that that, that, um, cut themselves down to two people, (laughs) you know, and that makes me want to take 18 people out more, (laughs) you know, (laughs) because it, it, it's, it's like, I think, We've always known Pigface was crazy and different, but I think yeah. it's more crazy and more different now than it ever has been yeah. to to yeah. to to what, to what is happening. Yeah. So I I want to do it. Uh, it's just a question of when. We're looking at different ways to do it. We've been yeah. looking for for a little bit now. So yeah, no, I, yeah. I'm I'm truly truly happy to hear that. I mean, I. Obviously, I don't want you to do something that's going to physically uh, impact you in a negative way. Um, but uh, damn, no, I'm, I so really I, want to see you. <laughs> I, I looked at um, someone was proposed like eight or nine shows uh, for this year. And I'm just like, look, it's so much work mm-hmm. to put this together. It's like, if we're going to do eight or nine, we might as well do 20. 20. Yeah. You know, but but then of course then I've got to look at how what what that means for me physically and for yeah. everybody else. You know, so would it's you know, I don't I don't think it will be this year. I mean, you know, if it was this year, we should have had it all scheduled already. Really, yeah. Um, but I think I think twenty twenty five is a is a a much better call for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. That's that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, um, kind of a yeah, anything to that. Um, I think Joey had a follow up for that. Yeah. Um, well, I was going to switch gears a little bit. I was going to say, you know, without a doubt, two of the most important labels for the industrial genre, hands down, are Wax Tracks and Invisible Records. You know, your roster includes icons like Chris Comley, Chem Lab, Damage Manual, Dead Voices on Air, FM and Einheit, Evil Mothers, Fotis, Grim Fairies, Murder Inc., Big Face, Sheep on Drugs, and just Sal to name a mere few. Um, like Swans, Einsteins, and Neubauten. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to leave those out. Apologize. Test, yeah. de- test department. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, how difficult was it to start your label, and what were some of the challenges you faced over the years? Well, um, I started Invisible with sixty dollars. Um, with uh, William Tucker was involved. I think William had one hundred and fifty dollars. We were both tired of sending cassette demos to people that were ignoring us. And um, 
I'd been in Pilf for five years and wasn't getting calls back. William had a project with Andrew Weiss. Uh, the song was called The Sound of Machines. They had a video on MTV. I can still hear it in my head. Um, so um, that was a couple of years before William came out to Chicago, um, 1988. Uh, uh, there were so many challenges. Um, you have the artistic challenges. Mm -hmm. Then you have the challenge of being a producer, uh, being responsible for somebody else's uh, careers, if you like. Mm -hmm. Um it changed my relationships with everybody. So the problem is, like, Jared and I don't get along. Because for Jared, you know, I, I could be Martin Atkins from Pill and Killing and Joke and Ministry, whatever. Once you start a label, you're the asshole who has the label. Mm. <laughs> and and that's how that's how the the game was run in the 80s and 90s. You know, you get the money from the asshole with the label. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that changed my relationship with a few people. Um, my my desire to have everything be as good as good as it could be, you know, I end up you know building my own studio and then spending almost sixty days working on Meg Lee Chin's album, twelve days alone just on a song called Heavy Scene, and um, oh. um so I mean. There was, I could have I, I could have done well just renting the studio out to other people instead of using the studio to help artists on the label and then uh, they you know hours were logged on a statement but they won't build money for that time mm. so uh, everything was a learning curve we released a lot of albums one year not enough the next when you release 300 albums you can have two or three great releases and you're waiting for a check, and the previous 30 releases have chiseled away in returns, chiseled away the money you thought was coming. So, oh, no. you know, you're on a cash roller coaster. Um, it's just difficult. It was yeah. a lot. Um, I love being back in the studio. I'm messing around in the studio again. Um, yeah. And I'm really proud of, of what I did with the label. Yeah. Uh, and it still exists, and we're reissuing... Um, uh, we just did the damage manual album that's going to ship in a couple of weeks. I cut oh, my I'm hand, so excited I for that. cut my hand, cutting the plastic. I'm oh, hand wow. screening, signing, numbering, and gluing all this stuff. It's it's beautiful, oh, but it's a huge I amount of work. Wait. Um, so we're slowly reissuing vinyl and, and having some fun doing that in really small quantities, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm going to be a very, very proud owner of that piece. I, I am, yeah, Damage Manual blew my mind. I, I, that I actually, I think the the very first uh, free free t shirt I got from you was a Damage Manual t shirt, and uh, wow, it came in with my Damage Manual bundle. And there uh, you go. Yeah, that that's an awesome thing you do. Do by the way, and everybody listening, you should get your butt over to Big Cartel for uh, Martin's store. Um, was it Fridays or weekends now that the, you got the the free shirt? I now, we, just we, so everybody knows, I order something, not just the shirt. I spend money, um, but but that free shirt is nice when you got a free shirt that comes in with your package. So yeah, we we do it every couple of months. Call it free shirt Friday. Yeah. I, we do um, we do a discount around Thanksgiving and Christmas where people can choose up to a ninety percent discount. Yeah, which is just doesn't is make so any sense. <laughs> yeah, I um, know. You, you, you got yeah, it's just ridiculous. Part, it's it's yeah. a beautiful thing you do. That uh, that store, uh, man, I, just, I probably got more of your autograph in my collection than anything else. <laughs> Good deal. And I freaking love it. I freaking love it. Um, now, we were just talking about the the studio and, and, and the label and everything. I've, uh, I was wondering... Um, as far as your work in the studio, what is the one thing that really lights you up when you're working in the studio? And on the reverse of that, what's the one thing you'd be happy to never, ever do again in the studio? Well, I really, um, I really like digging in to what I think is 
almost a great pop song, even if it's really difficult music. Yeah. But I think if you really work on difficult music and find the hooks and present mm -hmm. them, um, that if you spend some time, then what happens is the difficult music becomes hooky and it embeds itself deeper and it's more dangerous and subversive than if you just let something be difficult, 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 right? Yeah, I, like that. I like doing that. I like firing up all the tape delays and my analog effects, spring reverb, sweepable EQs, mm -hmm. um, frequency generators, even tied stuff, and, and just sit for hours looping things yeah. up and creating these ambient dubs. Those yeah. get released once in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really like doing that. Yeah. I, I like working with singers because I, I there's a thing that I like to do that's difficult for someone who's just coming into the game to do. So it's like, I'm happy to sit in a studio and be like, my bad. Mm. That was a bad idea. That's on me. Could you try it this way? And creating a relationship with a singer where you can get them to do something for 10 hours straight that creates the layered vocals of Ritalin or the, the puppy process stuff that I did yeah. where it's a lot of work to do those things. Um, I like doing that. And I, I'm not in a mood at the moment where there's anything I don't like. I, I'm excited to think about getting back into the studio, um, creating some strange dubby fucked up off time beds. Um I really love it when you do that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. but it's been a while. It's probably been 16 years since I really did that. Yeah. Because you've got you I call it the the tunnel of focus. You know, 16 hour session, the first four hours are, oh I forgot to turn my phone off now. Oh okay. Yeah. You, you're slowly pushing everything outside the studio door so you yeah. can focus in and focus in and focus in, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I get lost um, working on mix stuff and, uh, and I love it. And I mean, it, it's, it's so much fun. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> now, as far as that goes, um, we ask all of our pig face alumni. Um, we're going to ask you too. Can you share some pig face Levi stories? <laughs> well, um, this, I, this this is still pig face. I, I don't know if Charles remembers this, but it, I don't know what birthday it was. Uh -huh. We were still at the studio, the loft space on Warbash. And I called Charles up. I said, hey, it's my birthday tomorrow. I can't think of anything I'd rather do than sit and jam with you. And and Charles came down and we we jammed a bunch of stuff. I you know, I bought Steve Albini's tape machines when he went 24 track. And somewhere, I I mean it's not, it's in the building. It's not like I don't know where it is. Um, somewhere there's a roll of half inch tape with me and, and Charles just just being ourselves and just jamming our heads off. And yeah. I've I've got to sit and I've got to find that in the next few yeah. months. Um yeah. But um, yeah, I I think that um, to be that able goes. to yeah yeah right. to, to 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 be able to look to my left and yeah. and know that Charles is there. Well, I don't have to look to my left to know that Charles is there. I just know Charles is there. Hmm. It's yeah. like yeah. you know someone's got your back. Whatever mayhem is going on, this this stuff is just solid over here. You know? Yeah, and and that's a really special thing, and it's not, it's not like, uh, you don't have to say, "Hey, Charles, that was a thing. <laughs> Did you see that?" Although we might do that, but yeah. it's in the moment. It would just be like a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Charles, would, Charles would just, you know, Charles would just come over in front of the Tom Toms. And then, you know, like it's just jamming and then look up and yeah. go, whoa, <laughs> you know. uh, yeah. it's just that it's, it's yeah. this, um, it's a special kind of shorthand. Mm. It's like a telepathic shorthand yeah. between musicians that, that get it and they get each other, you know? Yeah. I'm going to tell you the other story. 
I remember. Speaking of, uh, I was at a raw bar having uh, my, my martini and seeing the local whatever band that was playing for that night. And uh, my, I got a phone call at the studio, the, uh, the bar. And it was, uh, it was Martin. And he goes, hey, Charles, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm just having a cocktail. He says, can you come down to the studio? And uh, it was Warzone. Oh, and man. And Warzone is like Die Warsaw studio. Where Die Warsaw yeah. camps is at. Yeah. And uh, I said, yeah, I, I can come. Yeah. So I go. And who is sitting in the studio with Martin? Is Geezer Butler. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is incredible. Here's a guy from Black Sabbath. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. And last time I saw Black Sabbath, they were throwing quarter stick in the 80s in the crowd. <laughs> and, and 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 Ozzy says, okay, we're gonna stop the show if People don't don't you know stop throwing these M80s, and I looked on the stage. I was on the mezzanine, and I go, "Wow, that guy's you know those guys. I thought they were big, you know. I thought they were huge, you know." <laughs> and so I go to the studio, and and here I am. Let me finish my martini, and I run to the studio, and Martin introduces me to Geezer Butler. And that oh, made my night. Oh my God, <laughs> I was awesome. like, so "Oh awesome. my God!" You know, and I wasn't, you know, I, you know, I still I get nervous as fuck. But uh, I'm telling you, people, performing arts. When you take a class in performing arts, it is a good thing for you. It's mm -hmm. good for you, you know, having a mirror in front of you and everything. Mm -hmm. And I help my composer. The whole all time, I'm standing there laughing with my daughter. Oh my god, this is great. Let alone playing me talking to Martin, but yeah. then Geezer Butler. So inside, the me inside is like, oh my god, what the fuck? What's <laughs> fucking? Oh shit, Lord Jesus, help me. Anybody, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we can't believe it. Who can I call? You know? Yeah, and, we uh, <laughs> we we were doing uh, the for Monster. the first Mortal Kombat album. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh my god, and. Uh, I was like, wow. But that yeah. was like that was a moment, you know. I was Je was was Jason engineering that? I think Jason I mean, was there. Yeah, Jason, Jason McNinch. Jason yeah. McNinch was there. Yeah. yeah. And Jason me Jason, we 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 put a we we built a bond, you know, we became roommates at the loft, which is now School of Rock in Chicago on really? Lake Street. Yeah. That's wow. the thing. 2940 wow. is now School of Rock in Chicago on Lake Street. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that wow. something? That's I know, wild. I, I know we used to rehearse and the train would go by. Yeah. And the train would stop and we'd be playing or, you know, whatever. And uh, people on the train be like, man, you know, on your elevator, you know. And uh, the electricity, we we kept wondering why aren't we getting electric bills? <laughs> and <laughs> and and the reason why we never played electricity at all the equipment and all the jamming is because uh, the Catholic Charities building was right connected to our building, so all of that was taken care of. By the charities, wow, wow, so, yeah. So I had never had to pay a phone uh, electric bill. Wow, and we, and yeah, I know, I know. I kept saying, "Hey, man, are we going to pay the electric bill? Don't we have to pay for?" It? Like, wow, I don't know. What a, what a spot that! What a legendary spot that was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, so I know them, but um, but um. Uh, that, that 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 yeah that place some kid somebody told me they go yeah man I he says he's teaching I don't know the guy's name he's teaching at the school of rock and he told wow. me 
we have had mem- we've had st- her stories of yeah. the loss. Well, I've got to, next time I, I'm, I'm going to go drive by there this weekend. Maybe go, yeah. I'll go and have a look. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I used to walk out through underground and 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 it was just great because you you park your car on Lake Street and the train the L the L the L train would go ran up, you know, along uh, Lake Street. And uh, you, if you have expensive things in your car, you will get them broken into. Yeah. So I would just not, you know, there was a bum. And I, one time I got in the car and this bum jumped out of the ran. And I go, whoa, you know, that guy could have really killed me. So I, you know, oh, I, you know, so I said, I said to the guy, I go, I saw him around, hanging around. I go, hey man, uh, let me know if you need to sleep in a car. My back seat is is, is the back door is, is 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 unlocked, so you can go in there and rest up. Just mm-hmm. don't leave nothing in my car. Don't don't mess up. No big parties and stuff. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> And it was cool. He he did, you know. I didn't wow. have nothing, my stereo taken. Wow. You know. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it, that was that that was a that was a hell of a place there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was that was a, one of those spots. Yeah, it was. It was. Because I remember they had uh some uh, movie uh was being filmed and uh David Spade was uh there. Oh. Keanu Reeves, it was in this movie, and they were filming it, and they had all these trailers and 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 you know and film stuff, and uh, we went and said, "Hey, listen, uh, can you guys uh, can we uh, can we come and eat it in the uh, food trailer?" <laughs> and uh, they go, "Oh, no problem. We're in the building there here," and. And you know, and, you know, they filmed out on the roof of the of the building and the loft, huh. and it was great. You know, uh, overlooking the expressway, it was it was that place was really cool. Yeah, we had a uh, had a uh, it was like the main the the floor had uh, big rooms. I, I'm sure each room was like a loft space. Yeah, you know, I didn't have a window. But it was cool with me. I had air. It was air conditioned. Yeah. And me and me and McNinch, you know, we had it made. You know, it was great. You know, it was a great. It was a great fun. You know, you can practice. That's when I learned how to. Jason McNinch's pedals were incredible. That I would play bass through. And so I I didn't know how to adjust pedals and stuff. But I would play through his, and 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 the effects right. and stuff I would give was just great. You know, it was fun. Mm. I miss those days. Yeah, I miss that guy for sure. Yeah, mm. yeah, I miss Jason. He was a, yeah. uh, he was really good. You know, he was really cool. Uh, I can think of something. He can come up with it. You know, the last release, the last thing we worked on was uh, Fate Fall, and it's a track. You know. Where Betty X, I sent this track to Betty X to listen to it, and uh, and uh, and uh, Mark Panic did vocals with with on it, so that was a good track. That was a good wow. track. Wow. Jason did a good job on that, you know. Yeah, he met Mark Panic and became friends with Mark Panic, and I told oh. him Mark Panic was the first I met by Mark Panic, and I always thought that he was. I always thought he should be should have been as big as Al, mm. you know. Uh, when I knew Frank, Frankie knew him, but uh, Mark Panic, he's in a Razor House now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he had a, it was it was it was something. Uh, uh, it was really I saw a show at Metro, and he was. I was like, oh my God, I forgot the name of the band. 
but he was he put on the show and he had, that left the impact on me. I go, this is really, this is alternative. This is the shit. He's, this guy, he's, he's married to Nan, isn't he? Yeah, Nan. Yeah, yeah. Nan Walsh, yeah. She had yeah a, they she they had came a, and visited. Yeah. Oh yeah. She had a. She was. A, she's a good DJ too. She huh. She does country music. Hmm. Yeah. She's really good in the country music. Yeah. And uh, they, they um. I'm glad that they um. They saw. I saw them. When I saw Conformco, when we did Conformco, at Liars Club. They came, and uh, Mark Panic. I said, man, every time I see him, I tell him, I saw you on stage, and I said, I got to know that guy. I got to know him. And I, everyone, I walked around, and I made it. I didn't know I moved around the Metro then, but uh, but when I when I got back backstage, he was just so cool. You know, I said, you influenced me to the point where I want to play bass and guitar and play in the band. Yeah. Well, and then working for Jam, that was it, you know. <clears throat> so that, that 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 set the course for me to this day. And then working with Jolly and everything. Mm -hmm. That really I mean, I used to be so scared of him. <laughs> and, and here he is, he's like <laughs> a big brother. I was so yeah. scared of Jolly. I was he's, he's still up. scary though. Yeah, he's still scary. I mean, oh, he's my still God. scary. Yeah. Oh, man. He was scary. I remember we sneak in this concert, all the concerts. We all have our little meetings and we say, we're all gonna get in. And those that trail back, you guys gonna get that guy, that jolly guy's gonna get you. And so <laughs> yeah. So we get in and get in, and finally, um, uh, I think I told the story to Jolly. I, I wrote it in the, in the, uh, on Facebook. I go uh, one of my stories. I said uh, we will wait till the end of the concert and see what we can scavenge. We can score any lids, you know, uh, any jewelry, money. We find it all, all yeah. over the floor. There again. Oh yeah. wow! And and the last persons. You know, and the security guys, we had to we had to stay out of sight because we didn't want them to see us because they knew that we snuck in. And so we were we started getting wise, we were scavenged well until you know the crowds got you know started piling out of Aragon. And after a while, uh we still be scavenging and they they go, this big jolly will come up and go. You shitheads, get out of here. What the hell are you doing in here? Go, you know, so we scatter, scatter. And he said, get out of here now. And then all of a sudden he says, hey, you guys want some pizza? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you know, one of my friends said, yeah. I said, man, shut up. Man, we stuck in here, dude. That's that's a fucking guy. He's gonna kick our ass. So come on in here now. So we got our gathering. We went to this room to eat some pizza, and he walked into the room, and there was all the guys in security there. And I said, "Oh man, we got set up." Because <laughs> they knew that we were getting in the shows free. Yeah, and. uh and he says to the, to the security guys, he goes, "You guys did such a job today on 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 the, on the security that you suck. <laughs> I ought to get I ought to get these guys here. They should work for they should work security." And he and he goes, "You want a job?" And I go, "Yeah." And that's how I got hired. There you go. I said, he offers offers us a job, and I said, "Yeah." And I think I was, in, I was, I think one of the bigger guys, and I was the tallest guy out of our group. Yeah. And um, and he says, I said, yeah. And so I got hired. And yeah. the first job I had to work for Jam was Thin Lizzy huh. at the Uptown Theater. 
Mm-hmm. That's where I had to watch Jolly's Daughters. Nice. And uh, I saw Phil Lynott. And the first time yeah. I saw an Irish, black Irish man. Yeah. And when he spoke, <clears throat> I didn't understand what the fuck is he? I said, listen, <laughs> I said to him, I go, I said, this is great. I get to get this autograph. These guys have been supposedly come to America, supposedly have been in America to tour. And they were, they got in trouble or they got in a fight and they had to cancel. So they finally came and I said to him, I go, excuse me, man, uh, that lady you're looking for, her uh, husband works for her. I work for her husband. (laughs) He's a guy with that big giant truck wrench. (laughs) And these are his, these are his, these that's these are his daughters, and I'm watching his daughters, and his wife is 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 the, is the uh, her husband is that guy that's you know working the stage, and you ought to be careful, man. Because mm-hmm. I you know she is hot, but dude, you don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Phil well, and I said, "Thanks, mate. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for warning me. <laughs> thanks oh, for warning me." And. Uh, and he was cool, you know, and uh, that's that was that was my adventure with Jolly Rogers. Yeah, with Red Jam. Yeah, he's still he's still. Uh, I keep telling him he calls me once in a while. He's he's got to come and visit the museum because yeah, I see his signature here and there um, yeah. on on yeah. stuff, you know, literally and figuratively, and uh, he he's got to come down and chill yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. he's got to come. He got to. Got to put a little shrine there, Jolly Rogers. Yeah, yeah he, he yeah. definitely deserves his own little corner. Yeah, yeah. I wish you yeah. had that truck wrench. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> that's what I. That's what I got to ask him for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wrench. Oh my God, I saw him smash. I saw him one time smash two guys' heads together, and uh, I was standing behind a pillar at the air gun, and I was like, "Whoa!" He, he didn't see me. You know, yeah. but uh, he was aware. Of, they were aware of that we were sneaking in. Some of those guys, we were in tests. <coughs> we tested those guys. Yeah. Because we found how to get in all the time. Mm-hmm. We always found a way to get in. Mm-hmm. We, I never had to pay for it. We sneak in there, and uh, that was that was that was my that that was my introduction to rock and roll. You know, and that was that. You know. Well. Yeah. So, so the the other thing is, uh, so now the um, I guess, like you said, Thrillville is going on tour, and uh, Frankie, Frankie's been really nice. He's been, you know, re- responding to my comments or whatever, and I really, you know, Groovy Man has really been cool. You know, really been cool. You know. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah it it's good. To, you know, he's 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 going through some. You know, he's going through some stuff himself. But we're really been talking, and we love each other a lot. You know, Marston doesn't want to do any kind of podcast or anything. He's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not on that. Not doing it. You know. Mm-hmm. So, I hope they have a good tour. You know, yeah, people everything. are excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are really he excited. does. Buzz does everything, but Buzz wants to take. He wants. He wants some. He needs some help there. You know, he needs some help there because he does everything and him. You know, he does everything him from him and Frankie. Yeah. But uh, it's good to see it still going on. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still is. You know. Yeah. And we're you know I'm, I know I'm glad you didn't hear my. Martin, I'm so glad, you know. I talked to Kevin, Kevin Keys. He's in he, you know, he's he's very supportive, you know. And uh I just wanna, you know, all those guys, Jesse, uh Cyanotic, yeah, those guys are playing with uh KMF FDM, yeah. Yeah. That's a great not, that's a great slot. Yeah, that is. 
I'm not going to be able to go, but maybe I'll see them. Maybe I can see them before the show or after they play. But I'm not going to be able to go because Danny has a uh, has a her she has a treatment that she has to go to. Mm. But um, Cyanotic is really re I really like. We had a, a little a little group, you know, Sean Payne that we always get together and uh, and um, take videos. The the COVID we had the COVID. Yeah, and um, we would videotapes. We did a lot of video shoots and stuff. And uh, he was um, he's really uh, Sean Payne is really really good, real good. Cyanotic yeah. is really good, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a I'm good sorry. guy. Yeah, I'm sorry oh. about what happened to his wife and everything. Oh yeah. Well, I've I've got a suggestion for you. Mm -hmm. We're we're coming up to two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if you guys want to do a part two, I'd be happy to do a part two at, in at some point down the line. Absolutely. If if you want to do that. Absolutely, because we we, I, I I can tell you for a fact we we cannot run out of questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, Can we at least promote your South by Southwest because you'll be here in Austin. Yeah, yeah, let's let's um, do that. That and uh, get some more uh, donation stuff for the museum. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm I'm speaking at South by next Wednesday. Um, I think it will be the my thirteenth time as a as a featured speaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it it seems like you know what started as this really small thing, helping musicians, hmm. is now sponsored by the US Army, which that's okay. But mm -hmm. I, I think now I'm reading that uh, what used to be Raytheon, the weapons manufacturer, mm -hmm. is involved in sponsoring it. And I'm, I'm like, huh. I, I, I prefer to be inside the building making comments rather than outside the building throwing stones. So yeah. I'm going to be inside the building next week and I'm going to mentioned some of this stuff but it's it it's like everything else just like we're talking about lake street and and the the you know yeah. everything is changed to, to be course. almost unrecognizable yeah. you know and yeah. sometimes change is good i don't know what's going on down there i'm i'm humbled and honored to be chosen to speak but i i'm still kind of looking into exactly what's going on there but yeah. um yeah, so I'm I'm speaking there next uh, next Wednesday. I mean, it, unless you have a thousand dollar ticket, you you know, uh, it's it's like a closed conference. Yeah, um, yeah I can't get in. I need a yeah. badge. Yeah, wow. I mean, and it's and yeah. and that's changed as well. We used to I used to take four or five students down there. They would all get badges, and uh, we'd have a guest list, and. Uh, we should do with the skate nicks. When I used to hang out with skate nicks, we should go around and take those badges. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, you but know. it's all it's all photo ID now, and oh, there's people wow. checking the. Oh, oh yeah, man. yeah, it's pretty yeah. serious stuff. Yeah. Wow. Damn. Yeah, we're living yeah, in a whole new world, man. We walk around, we see someone with the badge, and just snatch right off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna take it. <laughs> but I'll get to. You always bump into to old friends and uh, down there, and I'll get to see Ted Cohen, and Ted Cohen was the Warner Brothers representative on the first PIL tour in 1980. Before yeah. that, he was the Warner Brothers rep on the Sex Pistols tour, and before that, he did the Beach Boys, and he's still at the highest level. Wow. Uh, he's involved with digital media now, so. Uh, it's crazy to me that that we're still friends, and uh, I'm going to have a cup of coffee with him. I'm going to speak, and then I'm going to come back and mm -hmm. host uh, open house at the museum Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm. Yeah. All right. Mm. Well, Martin, we can't thank you enough for being on the show. Um, hey, it's nice to hang. Dude, it's really nice to hang. I saw you share my video on your page. 
yeah, little, little schoolgirl screams happened. Just, so, just so you know, um, that that was a big moment for me. Um, that that was awesome. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for yeah, participating and being as awesome as you are. Um, it's it's nice to hang. It's nice to see you, Charles. Uh, yeah, I love you, man. You. I love you love a lot. You too. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. It's, it's good to see you. Yeah. I miss you. I yeah. miss Chicago, and I miss the boys and Katrina. God. Yeah. Man, yeah. I miss you all. Well, you come and hang on your way to Milwaukee or yeah. Osh on your way to Oshkosh, and uh, maybe we can sit in the garden again and have dinner, and you can come yeah. and hang at the museum. And yeah. I can look at the turnip. There you go. <laughs> no, there you go. Yeah, definitely. D D Danny mentioned that. She says she wants to come down there and see. Good and she wants to meet Katrina. Yeah. You know, so... And please, we'll please thank Danny for those lovely words up at the beginning. That was, oh uh, yeah, yeah, that oh, really, yeah. You really got me. Yeah, de de definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, definitely. let me let me know when this is coming out, and I'll share the links around. All right, come out tonight. Yeah, yeah it'll be on tonight. Oh, good deal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Get on this right now. All right. Well, everybody, <laughs> this has been Martin Atkins. Cheers. See ya. Cheers. Love yeah. you, man. Love See ya. you, man. Bye.